All right. Welcome, everybody, to our March 19th Team BTFP team call. I'm so glad that you guys are all here. Sorry, we're starting a couple minutes late. Um, and today was the Lion King as our musical. I don't know why I was in a Lion King mood. I wanted to find the Lion Sleeps tonight, but the Broadway cast didn't really, like, do a long version of that one. So, sorry. What will it be next time? Uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Here is... Everybody on the board for Success Club, this is pretty incredible. There are a ton, a ton of names here. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of people on the board. Not a ton of people qualified, so we've got a lot of so many people with four points. All of you guys, if your name is in here and you have four points, um, do not end the month with four points. It's too close to end with four. You still have a lot, a lot, a lot of time left. Um, Everybody that is already Success Club qualified, make sure that in the little box in your Coach Online office where it says there's two columns and one says if you have the points and the other if you have the HDPV, you need them both to say yes in both of those columns. Some of you guys, <coughs> excuse me, have the points but you haven't had your Shakeology come through for the month yet. So just make sure that... You're not going to miss out on Success Club because of that. If you canceled your Shakeology HD, then you need to have something worth 90 PV on HD to be able to get Success Club. You can't just have the points. It has to be both. Um, okay, and I know that there are a bunch of you guys pushing for Success Club 10 or higher, so keep going. Don't give up. You guys have lots of time left. Everybody else on here, you guys have more than enough time. Um, and even if your name isn't on here yet, you still have more than enough time. I have myself personally gone from zero points to six points just in one day and I've seen lots of coaches do it so don't lose heart don't give up on yourself um, because I know that you can make it you can get those points towards the free cruise next year you can get the beach body monopoly game that's the fun prize for everybody that success club qualified this month um, and you can just be moving your business forward which is what this is about so congratulations and top coach of the week is Christina again. So I'm so glad that she was able to be here for a little while. Um, this is her second time as top coach of the week since I started it. And this is the second consecutive week that her team, Project G, has held the top spot. So you guys, who is going to rise up and knock them out of that front row spot? I want to see some competition starting going on. Um, but Christina is an incredible, incredible person. If you don't already know her, if you're not connected to her, look her up in our team page and follow her. She is an incredible leader. She leads from the front. She's a busy lady. She works two different jobs and top of coaching. She was training for a marathon that she ran and a half marathon. She's also planning a wedding. So she's definitely someone with a no excuses mentality. And if you follow her, you know that she is just infectious with her positivity and her smile and her laugh and all that stuff. Um, oh no, I have the wrong picture in here. Um, anyway, Sarah or Christina is actually the one that is the top coach. This is the one from last week. For some reason, I guess it didn't update, but it's in our team page so you guys can see it there. And congratulations to everybody else that was on there. We had a good little group of people. All right, so let's jump right into our team call. So our team call tonight is about leading beyond your emotions. So that's kind of what we're going to be digging into. I hope you guys are ready. And I thought that this quote was really beautiful. It's by Rumi and it says, maybe you're looking in the branches for what can only be found in the roots. And I think that this definitely applies to what we're going to be talking about today because we're going to be talking about how you need to be rooted in something that's deeper than just your emotions. Your emotions are up in the branches and they are fly by night. The wind will blow them left and right and you'll never be able to have any sort of real grasp. So you need to figure out what is going to root you through the rest of it. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, let me make this smaller so you guys can see. Hopefully that's better. All right. Let's talk about leadership behind your emotions. So what is, or beyond your emotions, what does it mean to be leading with your emotions? Because that is basically the first step is figuring out when you're leading with your emotions so that you can try and avoid doing that. So some examples of, of leading with your emotions in coaching would be if you just wake up and you just don't feel like it, like you just don't feel like getting up a little bit early 
or reprioritizing your schedule a little bit that day to get your three vital behaviors in, to check in with your challengers, or to maybe send some invites to do your personal development. You just don't feel like it, and so you don't do it. That is definitely leading with your emotions and running your business by your emotions. Another way is avoiding the basics because they're tedious. So the three vital behaviors are really simple and they're really easy to do, but conversely, they're really easy not to do. And that is why so many people don't do them. People don't do the three vital behaviors because they're easy not to do, not because they're hard to do. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Doing your workout, drinking your Shakeology, and reading personal development, two of the three vital behaviors are focused internally. They're focused on yourself. They're not even things that you have to go outside of yourself to do, but it's really easy to not prioritize ourselves, especially if we're busy moms or wives and just women in general. I feel like we have a tendency to put ourselves last on the list of things that need to be taken care of. When in coaching and just in your life, this is a good lesson in general, you really need to prioritize your own health and your own wellness. And so not doing those basic tasks because they're boring or maybe they're just not very sexy. They're not as cool as like rebranding a blog or getting famous on Instagram or something like that. They're definitely not sexy, those tasks of just doing the same things every single day. They're tedious. And any of you guys that are Sapphire personalities that just want to make everything fun, I know it's so hard for you guys to stick with the same things every single day. But that's actually leading with your emotions. That files under the I just don't feel like it kind of excuse. Another way that we lead with our emotions is making excuses for ourselves based on time limitations. So if you say, um, oh, I just, I can't, or this other person has more time than me, that's why they're successful, or I didn't get, you know, my invites done because I just didn't have enough time. All of us have the same 24 hours in a day. I don't know if you guys have seen that little, um, it's really popular on Pinterest, the quote that says, you have as many hours a day as Beyonce. And that always makes me laugh because she's such a powerhouse businesswoman. And obviously, she's getting an incredible amount done. But it's funny to think, like, yes, I have the same amount of time to do things in a day as Beyonce does. Um, and I don't want you guys to feel like I'm coming down on you or anything. This is all from a place of love because I'm guilty of all of these things. I've led with my emotions Tons of times in all areas of my life, not just in my coaching business. And this call tonight is really, it's not meant, it's meant to just kind of open your eyes to maybe some things that you're doing without realizing it that are actually self-sabotaging your success. Because the last thing you want to do is be getting in your own way for your goals. But these are some of the ways that we do it. So I know that everybody's lives are different and there are struggles going on and there are hard times. But everybody has those struggles and everybody has those hard times. So when you say, I don't have time, that really kind of just means that that wasn't a priority for you. And that's fine. That's not bad. Some days, Beachbody doesn't need to be your priority. Your priority needs to be taking care of whatever is happening in your life that time. But when it becomes a habit and it, it becomes an excuse, not just kind of a one-off or, you know, some sort of emergency situation, when it becomes your excuse for not doing things, it starts to kind of fall under the I didn't feel like it category, which is just meaning that you're not prioritizing it. You're not figuring out a way to make it work. There are people who have less time than all of us out there doing way more than us because they're just organizing it and prioritizing it better. So I never want you guys to fall into that trap of, telling yourself that you don't have enough time because what happens is it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Just like with our challengers when they tell us they don't have enough money for a challenge pack, when we know that they do and then they go to Target and they accidentally spend $300 on random stuff when all they needed was like a new shirt. It's kind of the same situation. We waste time the same way we waste money and we prioritize time the same way we prioritize money in our lives. We can find money for the things that we really want, just like we can find time for the things that we really want to do. Another example of leading with your emotions is responding before reflecting. So this is something that I definitely get guilty of, um, and I like to blame it on my Italian blood firing up every now and then, because I'm usually pretty non-confrontational, but every now and then it's like things will build up, 
and there'll be a straw that breaks the camel's back and I just react and it's like it's just like reaction vomit like you can't control it it's just coming out of nowhere and it's never good like nobody wants to see that no one wants to be involved in that and when I respond without reflecting, I'm responding based on the heat of my emotions. Now, this can be in all different cases when it comes to coaches. This can be maybe with a customer service issue that's frustrating. Maybe it's a coach relations issue that's frustrating. Maybe it's an issue with another coach that's frustrating or with a challenger or with a potential coach or a potential challenger. And venting doesn't really solve any of the problems so getting on Facebook and complaining or complaining to your coaches or complaining to your success partner or complaining to your sponsoring coach and your upline it doesn't really solve any of the problems I'm not saying you should never vent to your friends or vent to me about stuff I'm here anytime you guys need to talk anything out and I'm happy to listen to you but you don't want to make it a habit just like these other things. You don't want it to get to where you're just responding to all of these things before you actually take a step back, try and remove yourself from the emotions and think about it. Another way that we let emotions defeat us or that we lead with them is by letting a no defeat you. And I know some days are harder than others and this seems to kind of be something that builds. So, you know, in the beginning of the month, maybe... A no doesn't bother you as much as when it's the last week of the month and you're really trying to make something happen. But when you let a no defeat you emotionally, you're running your business by your emotions. I've used this example before. I'm going to use it again because I think it's really great and we have some new people on our team. But you need to think about your invites the same way a waiter at a restaurant thinks about serving coffee to all of their customers. How many times have you been in a diner and a waiter will come around with one of those pots of co diner coffee and say, anybody want some more coffee? Anybody want coffee? And maybe you want coffee. Maybe you don't want coffee. Maybe you want coffee later. And you tell them that and they go, okay. And that's it. That waiter doesn't like go into the back and start crying if you told them no. Like, I'm a horrible waiter. I don't know why I'm doing this with my life. Maybe I should just quit because nobody wants my coffee. Like, no, the waiter doesn't care because the waiter's not emotionally attached to that outcome. They don't really care if you want the coffee or not. Their job is not to get you to drink the coffee as much as their job is to offer coffee to everybody and to give coffee to the people that want coffee. And that's the way that you need to think about this. You offer it and you give it to the people that are interested. Just because you offer it to someone doesn't mean that they have to say yes for you or for them. You don't want anybody saying yes that doesn't really need it or doesn't really want to be doing it because that's just stressful for both of you. You want people saying yes that want the coffee and so you should never let a no defeat you because the no is not to you the no is just to the challenge pack or to coaching or whatever it has nothing to do with you or how that person thinks of you or how you are as a coach or how you are as a person you have to separate yourself from your emotions that are tied with hearing the word no and you'll free yourself up to get so much more done okay the last two are kind of similar but examples of leading your with your emotions is Going from 150% all out, like just foot on the gas, crazy, crazy, crazy to like 10% the next week. So what happens there? We see it all the time with coaches. They'll start really strong and then all of a sudden kind of vanish or maybe they'll get this like motivation streak after they've been a coach a while and they'll just blaze in glory and they'll have all these success club points and all this stuff and then down to not even the bare minimums like they're barely around well what what happened here like what's going on was it burnout because that's pretty that's a pretty common problem when you're going like crazy 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 was it that they weren't grounded and rooted enough in their why to sustain that sort of pace maybe so but either way it's not a good thing so yes it's fine to push really hard sometimes especially if you have a big goal that you're trying to make happen if you're okay with that but it's more important for you to stay consistent than for you to go 150 for a little while and then crash and burn for a long time and then come back and then crash and burn again. It's better to find some sort of medium that you can sustain momentum for you. And that's going to keep you from getting burned out and keep this something that you enjoy doing. Okay, the last one's kind of similar, unpredictability. That's another way we lead with our emotions because what we're doing is we're letting that not feeling like it get in the way of actually doing stuff. So this happens a lot, a lot, a lot in coaching. You may have coaches on your team that are like this, and you may have challengers that are like this, and you can kind of see from the outside perspective how frustrating it can be. But they're really, really, really consistent, 
and then it's nada. So maybe they hit success club for two months, and then the third month, they're just gone. Then they ramp up again, and then they fizzle out for a couple months. And while it's great, anything that they're doing is great because it's helping them, for the long term, if they really want to build a business and really want to make this successful, that unpredictability is just like pulling the rug out from underneath your feet every single time. Because you have to be consistent in this business to build trust with your audience and also to build trust with your team. As you guys grow and as you add coaches under you and as you become leaders of your own teams, consistency is even more important because as a leader, if you aren't leaning from the front consistently, your coaches are going to have a hard time following you. There's this um, quote, I forget who it's from, but it says that your team is never going to pass the level of leadership that you are at. So if you are only hitting Success Club 5, you can't be expecting to recruit a bunch of rock stars that are going to be hitting 20 and 30 if you're barely hitting Success Club 5. If you're only reading personal development once a week, then you can't expect to be attracting team builders that are reading it every single day because you're not leading them from that front. If you're inconsistent, you can't expect that your coaches are going to be consistent because they're seeing your example. You're setting the pace. You're also shooting yourself in the foot for people that are watching you because if you're just beach body this, beach body that, this is amazing, that's amazing, look at all the things I'm doing, this is so great, you should join me, and then you stop talking about it for a while, everyone's going to be like, is she still doing this? What's going on? Do I want to join this person or do I want to join this person over here who seems really consistent? They've been talking about it for like a year and they've never stopped. I kind of trust this person over here more than this person who... I see like a week of stuff and then I see nothing for a long time. So you're really only causing trouble for yourself when you do that. And it's really leading with your emotions because you're letting your emotions get the best of you instead of thinking of it as a business and thinking I need to do these things that are simple every day consistently. You're letting the I feel great about it today. I'm going to do as much as I can today take over. And then the next day you're all burned out or something happens and you just get frustrated or you get down or you get tired. And you say, I just don't feel like it today. And it's that up and down, up and down that ends up causing a bunch of problems. Struggle. Because I know that as I was reading those things, in some of your head, you were probably like, yeah, but Becca, you don't know my situation. I really don't have time. I have this and this and this going on in my life right now. This is a problem. That's a problem. This is a struggle. This person doesn't support me. I don't have this. I don't have that. I totally get it. All completely legitimate reactions and responses. But I want to remind you that without struggle, there's no growth. I read this quote in a book that I'm reading, and I thought it was so brilliant. And it says, for a seed to achieve its greatest expression, which means for the seed to become the plant that it's supposed to become, it must come completely undone. The shell cracks, the insides come out, and everything changes. To someone who doesn't understand growth, it would look like complete destruction. And I just thought that was so beautifully worded and brilliant. But if you think about it, I know um, when I was in elementary school, I think it was fifth grade, we had to do like that lima bean project where you put a lima bean, like you soak it and then you put it between two wet paper towels, you put it in a Ziploc and like you leave it by the window of your classroom and you watch as it cracks open and sprouts. Did everybody else do that or was it only me? Um, but think about that. Think about if you didn't know how seeds worked and how plants really grew. Like if you were an alien coming to the planet watching this process, you would think for sure that this thing was just self-destructing, right? This thing is cracking open. This weird like green shoot is coming out of it. It looks like a worm. Like this cannot be good for the seed, right? It would look horrible, but we understand because we're taught that that's how growth happens. But we forget it so much when it's not so obvious and overt. When it's in our own lives, we look at the cracking and the inside outness and feeling completely undone and we look at it as destruction and we forget this is part of growth. This has to happen for the growth to happen for us to achieve our greatest expression. Let's talk a little bit about people who have achieved great expressions but that had some serious struggle. So hopefully you guys recognize these people by their faces. These are all people who had incredible marks on the world and incredible struggles at the same time. So Miss Oprah Winfrey, obviously one of the most influential people 
in the world, not to mention breaking all kinds of record for African Americans and for women and for African American women left and right. But she was told that she wasn't right for TV. Now, can you imagine being the person that told Oprah Winfrey that she wasn't right for TV? Like at this point in the world, like thinking back on your memory of your interview with her, being like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe that I said that. But someone looked Oprah Winfrey in the face and said, you're not going to make it on TV, Oprah. You're just not meant for it, right? That was a struggle for her. And if you actually look into Oprah Winfrey's life, she did struggle to kind of get out there. And, and that was a, I mean, that's a blow. Like to have someone tell you that, it probably stung her. But did she let it crush her? Did she just say, oh, you're probably right. I shouldn't be on TV. No, she said, no, I am meant for TV. I'm going to figure out a way and I'm going to do it. And she did. And look at her now. It's incredible. She has an empire. Babe Ruth known for his home runs, right? That is, even people who aren't into baseball, even people who are generations removed, you say Babe Ruth, you think home run champion, right? You think home runs. He had 1,330 strikeouts. And people don't talk about that because he was known for his home runs. But to get the home runs, you strike out sometimes. Do you think that Babe Ruth, every time he struck out, was like, I suck at baseball, I'm just going to go home. I'm going to give up. No, like he was going for the home runs. He didn't care about the strikeouts on the way. Uh, Steven Spielberg, incredible, incredible, incredible director, storyteller, just this brain, like insane the things that this man can create from his imagination. And he can bring it into the real world and he can make us look at it and feel something and think something and have this reaction to it, right? That is an incredible talent. He suffers from dyslexia. Does that stop him from reading scripts and translating them and, and getting this information? No, he hasn't let that stop him. If anything, these weaknesses have turned into strengths for people. Lastly, Steve Jobs. I don't know if you guys know his story, but Steve Jobs, founder of Apple, crazy genius, he was actually fired from Apple, the company that he started. They fired him. They kicked him out before all of, you know, the craziness with Apple. But that was a huge blow. Could you imagine the, your baby, the thing that you built and you trusted other people with, and then they kick you out of it? That is hard. I'm sure that he went home and was just crushed, utterly crushed. Now, did he let that be the end? Absolutely not. He came back. He launched the iPod. He launched the iPhone. He launched like everything that has transformed technology in the last decade after that. I, that was the platform for his rebound. Without struggle, there's no growth. Now, I, I don't really feel like I've had a ton of horrible struggles. So before I move to my own slide, I don't want everybody to be like, oh, woe was me, Becca. Like, can't believe this was so hard, but everybody has struggles and I wanted to share with you some of mine. So I do have a college degree, so I'm not like, oh, I, I did this on a college degree, but it's not one that I care about. I changed my major like 10 times and I literally only settled on psychology because it was my junior year and it was the degree that I had the most credits that would go towards it that also required the least amount of math classes. I'm not going to pretend like I'm good at math. Um, and so that's why I picked it. I picked it just to get out of school. I had no desire to become a counselor or a psychologist. I just wanted to be finished with school. I was divorced at 21. So pretty much by the time that most people were just getting serious in their life, I was already a divorcee. So that's like a big old red stamp across my head. In the process of that, I lost literally all of my friends and community and I was fired from my job. And I had to completely rebuild my life from the ground up. Everybody I knew, everybody I cared about, everybody I loved was gone. And I had to completely start fresh. I've never once in my life had a real job. Now, I've had a couple jobs for, like, companies, but they were in high school and college. I've never had a job where you have benefits and, like, a 401K and, like, paid time off. I have never had it. I've, ne I've, I've just always been kind of self-employed and making it work. But I don't, I view that sometimes to my own detriment because I don't have that same career experience that a lot of people have 
or even just interpersonal experience of working with other people in an office and understanding how all that goes. I don't have that. I'm completely self-taught in everything that I do to earn income. I don't use my psychology degree for my jobs. I'm self-taught in photography and writing and social media in graphic design, all of it. Everything that I, I use now, I just taught myself. I didn't have formal training in it. I didn't have teachers helping me. Most of it is late nights looking up YouTube tutorials and then playing around until I figure it out. Um, I have a very close family member with a very, very serious and untreatable mental illness. And I have a family member that in the last couple years has suffered with very, very bad case of um, cancer in his lymph system. So that has been a huge strain and struggle both emotionally and just in my life in general. Um, my husband and I have no family in town to help us with our son, which I know a lot of people don't, but some people do. And if you do, that is a huge blessing because we basically have one babysitter and if she's busy, we just don't get to do stuff. And super stressful when emergencies happen. It's super stressful for our photography job when we need to be able to, to take a job or to go somewhere and our babysitter cancels at the last minute and we're scrounging around for childcare. Stressful to leave your child with someone that you don't feel like you have a great, you know, already foundation with, but you have no choice. All of our family lives too far away for that kind of stuff. We do get to see them a lot and they do help when they can, but... We definitely don't have that like, hey, can you come over for an hour so I can go grocery shopping? We don't have that at all. When I started as a coach, I had over 70 pounds to lose. I was not fit at all. I wasn't healthy. I wasn't fit. I was in horrible shape. And I signed on to be a fitness coach. <laughs> like, definitely not ideal. And last year, I failed very publicly with some of my major goals. Now, I am a pretty ostentatious goal setter, so it's my own, it's probably my own fault for setting pretty unrealistic goals for myself, but I set them, and I was very public about the fact that I was going to hit them, and I was going to do it no matter what, and I failed publicly, and that can be scary, and that can be embarrassing, you guys, but even with all of that stuff, I am a premier coach, 2015, I was a became a six-figure earner in Beachbody in 18 months, and I'm top 50 in the company. Without struggle, there's no growth, you guys. Without that problem, there's no rise. You don't just, like, oh, wake up one day on top of the world. Like, you have to fight to get there. You have to grow to get there. Let's talk a little bit about leading with passion. Um, I think that this, I don't know why I love this photo so much, but I found it on Instagram and I had it on my phone because I was like, this is going to be a great photo to use for something sometime. And today's team call, I was like, yes, I have a great photo for this. But I love this like Egyptian looking hieroglyphic style photo. This is the difference between a boss and a leader. Bosses sit behind their desk and they tell everybody else what to do. They micromanage, they... They, they don't have any sort of connection with those people. They just bark orders, and that's what you're supposed to do. A leader does not do that. A leader is down in front, in the trenches, doing the exact same thing that they're asking everybody else to do. Leaders are paving the way. They're not just telling other people which way to go. So while I'm telling you to run your business and to lead beyond your emotions, I don't want you to get the wrong idea that I'm telling you to just kind of like be this person that has no emotions and no empathy and that's completely separated from that. I'm not. I don't want you to be a robot. I don't want you to be some sort of beach body coaching machine. I don't want you to become a micromanager where you distance yourself so much from everything that you don't have that emotional connection. But I want you to understand the difference between leading beyond your emotions and leading with passion. Now passion, you could say, is an emotion. But I want you to use it as a fuel instead of using it like a crutch. So be firmly, firmly rooted in your why. That is what's going to hold you strong during any sort of waves or seasons that are more trying or difficult. If you are firmly rooted in that, then it doesn't matter what happens up top on the tree. Like hurricanes can come, winds, rain. It doesn't matter because the roots are strong. The tree is going to stay planted firm and it's not going to be blown around you know 
I want you also to share your vision. So you may have this really great why, and you may have this insane vision for what your life can be and what your team can be and what Beachbody can do for your life and for the people that you bring into it. But you need to remember to share that. You have to share that with them so that they can catch that vision, so that they can, they can until they have their own vision, they can kind of use yours like fuel. You know, like you can use that almost like the same way that laughing is contagious like excitement and vision can be just as contagious. I want you guys to lead from the front, to be that leader, not a boss, and to, to lead with empathy. So when people on your team are struggling, I'm not saying that you need to just tell them to suck it up. You have to have empathy because everybody that you know, everybody that you come into, something in their life is stressful. That's just the nature of humanity. There's no one walking around that's like, everything's perfect, it's great. I mean, maybe you have like an afternoon like that, but then, you know, you come back to your car and you have a parking ticket or something. You know, it's just the way the world works. So have empathy because people are going through very real, very tough, very stressful things. But remember to work with the willing. Now, empathy and babying people are two completely different things. You can be empathetic as a leader, as a friend, as a success partner. You can be the ear the shoulder, all that kind of stuff, but don't try and drag anybody along. You have to remember to spend your time working with the willing. If the people that are coming to you that are really stuck or having a hard time and they just can't bring themselves to do the things that they need to do, you can have empathy for them, you can be there, you can be an encourager to them, but don't spend all of your time trying to drag them along through because all you're gonna do is both of you are now not going to get to the places where you're pulling this person and you're not gonna be able to go where you need to go. And that person, is since they're not gonna be pulling their own weight, they're not gonna get where they need to go. So it's just, it's not good for anybody. So spend your time working with the people that are showing you that they wanna do this. Invest in those people and really, really become a leader that works with the willing. Okay. So since I'm telling you guys to share your vision with everybody, I wanted to share mine with you guys. So I've said it a lot of times, but I know that there's always new people around. So just in case you don't know um, my why and vision, I have always very much felt like surely I wasn't put here on the earth to just work, pay bills, and die. Like that can't be my purpose. That can't be my life. Like I said before, I've never had like a quote unquote real job because I've just always felt like there has to be something more. And I've always been so determined to find whatever that was and to figure out a way to make it work. And, you know, I've done okay, but it wasn't until Beachbody that I really felt like I struck gold, you know, in that area. So for me, my why is to create a life free of money worries for me and my family. So growing up, my husband and I both grew up in families that were not very wealthy at all and so money was a stressful situation there wasn't money to do things sometimes and sometimes it was a limitation and I just don't want that for my family I don't want that for my son I don't want that for me and my husband or our marriage or any of it we really really want to own property and to build a house on it that is one of my driving why forces right now that gets me up that keep in the morning that keeps me up late that that gives me the passion to do things that, you know, may be difficult or scary for me, that keeps me consistent every single day. Because to me, the idea of being able to get to that point is more important than the little bits of discomfort or sacrifice that are happening in the moment. I'm happy, you know, to spend 15 minutes reading personal development instead of watching Netflix if it means it's going to I want to be the house that all of my son's friends want to come hang out at. Like, I want to be that fun, warm, welcoming house with the big kitchen that has tons of natural light and a big island where there's, like, cookies and chips and guacamole and, like, all of his friends are going to want to come hang out there because we're, like, the cool, fun house. I want this just liveliness and energy, and I don't want strife, and I don't want fighting, and I don't want him to be like embarrassed to have people over to his house because I want our life to to just be positive to other people. Not only my coaching, like I want I want the the ripple effect of what coaching has done for me and what coaching can do for other people to release that tension from our life so that our life in general 
just makes people feel better being around us. Like I want people to leave our presence feeling better than when they came in. That is a huge, huge, huge why for me as our family grows and as, you know, our son gets bigger. We really, really want to be able to financially retire both sets of our parents. Because like I said, we grew up in, in families that weren't very wealthy and they're still not. And, you know, as your parents get older, things become more difficult with health and and issues like that. And we want to be able to build a Beachbody business that can financially support both of our parents as well as us. That's a huge why for us. Now, outside of myself, I have an insane passion for helping other women feel free from whatever is making them feel stuck. That could be their own self-esteem, their financial situation, relationships, um, their actual physical location of where they are. I... I want women to feel empowered and confident enough to make decisions because they want to, not because they're stuck somewhere or they're making a decision out of fear or because they don't have an option. I think that's the worst possible thing. I'm slightly feminist in this um, mentality that I think women need to be able to feel empowered and to have the means to take care of themselves no matter what's going on and to make decisions that are good for them in any situation and to not feel like they can't do something or that they can't change their situation, that they can't get out of a situation because they don't have enough money or they don't have the means or they don't have the confidence or the support. I, I hate that idea. And I, I don't want any of the women that I know or that are on our team or that I can give them the option of, of getting out of that. I don't want any of them to have that. I really want our team to be like the soil that grows leaders not only just here in our team, but in all of Beachbody. Like, I want top 10 coaches coming from our team. I want people coming from our team that are just having this insane positive effect all over the world. I want the ripple effect to reach so, so, so far. So that so far that we can't even measure it anymore. And I really want to be able to help women reestablish their own self-worth. Self-worth. Because for me, I've always struggled with my own body image. I've never been a naturally thin person. I've always had to really work hard to keep weight off. And when I gained all of that weight with my son, it was a huge blow to my self-esteem. So I mean, I still work on it. It's something that, you know, a lot of personal development and just time and and just working on myself in general, it's, it's a process. But I want to help women go through that process as well to establish their own worth, not only inside themselves, but to also realize that their their self-worth is not dependent on what their body looks like on the outside. There's not one right body shape. I want people to be healthy and to feel confident no matter what size they are, no matter if they have stretch marks or if they have saggy skin or if they're tall and skinny or if they're short and round. Like, it doesn't matter to me. I just want them to feel confident and good about themselves so that Conversely, they feel empowered to make decisions that move their life forward so that they're not making decisions because they're self-conscious or they're afraid or because they don't feel like they're worth it, that they don't feel like they're worth making a decision that's good for them. I, I, will, I want to just wipe all that out. So that is my why and my vision. That's what fuels me every day. And that's what keeps me really rooted during the weeks and months that are hard, during the times when just shit's happening outside of my beach body life, when, when stuff's going on in our family that's stressful and I don't feel like I have time, or when, you know, I'm just tired and run down. Like, this is what roots me and makes me think, no, I want to move closer to that and further away from all of this other garbage. So I'm going to figure out a way to make this happen today. So no matter what your goal, whether your goal is like me, that you want to be a career coach and you want to help other people to be career coaches, or whether your goal is just that you just want to do this a little bit part-time and cover your Shakeology and have some extra money to do fun stuff, no matter what your goal is, be all in with it. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be someone that wants to be a full-time six-figure earner to be the only way to do this in Beachbody. If your goal is just to be able to cover your own stuff, that is fantastic, and I want that for you. But I want you to be all in with that goal. That goal is going to require some effort, and I want you to be there. I want you to put in the little things every day that are going to help you get there. So what I want you guys to do is think to yourself, do you believe that it's possible? Whatever your goal is, do you really believe that it's possible for yourself? And if you don't, 
maybe you need to take a little bit of time and sit down and start evaluating what negative thought patterns you have in your brain. What is limiting you? What what thoughts do you have that are – what are the little voices? Where are they coming from that are telling you that you can't have this or that life is not for you? It's not an option for you. I want you to kind of maybe take a little bit of time and figure out where this is coming from because it's not coming from your soul and your spirit. It's not. It's coming from somewhere else. It's coming from life experience or it's coming from the world or it's coming from a person or it's coming from maybe your subconscious, something that you learned growing up, but it is not coming from your heart. Because your heart and your soul and your spirit, they know what's best for you and they know your potential. It's this outside just crap that gets everything all mucked up. So if you don't believe that your goal is possible for you, it's going to be really difficult for you to be firmly rooted in it. So you kind of have to do a little bit of work first to figure out what are these beliefs and where are they coming from. Once you do have your vision, use that to establish the self-discipline that will move you beyond your emotions into more of a CEO business mentality. Just, you know, like any other big business, other CEOs, other, you know, managers and, and VPs, they don't just say like, oh, I just don't feel like doing my work. No, they have a company to lead. They have goals that they're going to do. They're going to do the things they need to do every day. We have to have that same mentality. This is a business. If you treat it like a business, it's going to work for you like a business. If you treat it like a hobby, you're going to get the results of a hobby. And that's just the truth. And if you want to do it as a hobby, that's great, but don't expect business returns and get mad when they don't show up. Think about what do you want your life to look like in five years? This is a really good way to catch your vision. What do you really want? What does your heart of hearts want your life to look like in five years? Do you not want to be doing your job? Do you want to be a stay-at-home mom? Do you want to be moved and living somewhere else? Do you want to have your house paid off? Do you want to be able to, to bless someone in your family? Like maybe in five years you want to be able to, to be in a position to help someone else out? What is it? Because that is going to be a really great indicator of your why and, and what your vision and your, your roots are going to be. And then if you really can't think of anything, then just kind of fill in the blank on this sentence. If I had blank, then I would blank. Because a lot of us think we can't do these things until we have these sort of things or we can't get to this place until we're already here. So figure out what those two things are because odds are you don't really need that thing or you already have the answer of how to get it. So maybe a little bit of homework to kind of think about if you don't already, already know. So let's talk a little bit about what to do when we do get stuck in these peaks and valleys because emotions are real. We are all living out these realities, and our situations affect us. Just saying like, oh, it's, you shouldn't let it affect you, it doesn't matter because it does affect us because this is our life, and we live it, and it's our reality, and that can make things really difficult. So how do we deal when we have these bad times? How do we make lemonade out of lemons? First of all, we've got to stop the pity party. You can have a pity party for, you know, a couple minutes or an hour, even a day if you really need to, but you can't let yourself get stuck there because all you're doing is hindering yourself. You're not helping yourself. You're not helping the situation get any better. You're not making any forward progress. Pity parties are just stall outs. You're just laying around in the muck of your situation, not doing anything to get out. And I know that sometimes it feels good to just wallow for a little while. And sometimes you got to let yourself do it but you got to set a timer on that stuff, you guys, and then you got to get out of it. Is having a pity party going to change your situation? Is having a pity party going to make it any better? And is just stopping everything you're doing to have a pity party going to actually help you? So these are the questions to kind of get you out of it. So when you have these peaks and valleys, be anchored in the bigger picture. And now this can be whatever it is for you. It can be um, maybe something journaling, it can be, you know, something that is in your religion or your spirituality, it can be your vision for the future, but whatever it is, you need to anchor yourself in that and then find your outlet because coaching doesn't need to be the only thing that you ever do. If it does, you're going to go crazy. So maybe your outlet is writing or art or photography, dance, maybe it's running, maybe it's yoga, maybe it's bubble baths and reading like magazines that don't mean anything. Whatever your outlet is that makes you feel renewed and it lets you kind of get some of that like nasty energy out, find that outlet and make sure that you actually use it. You know, like if you love creating things, then sign up for a fun like art class or ceramics class or something. Give yourself that little bit. I promise it's going to make you a better person in all areas of your life. You're going to be a better friend, a better spouse, a better mom, a better coach. 
when you're doing those things that let you get some of that stuff out. You need the outlet. When you're having these peaks and valleys and you feel like nothing's going right, take some time to remember your past triumphs. Because I think sometimes we get stuck in this tunnel vision of right now because something can be so all-encompassing and it's not our fault. It's not anything bad. It's just the nature of how we experience things. We just get stuck, you know, thinking like everything is bad. But we have to remember that this too shall pass. We have made it through hard stuff in the past. We've done hard things. We've come out the other side. We're going to get through it. And sometimes it just takes sitting down and thinking about it, maybe writing out your past triumphs and sticking them somewhere where you're going to see them. If you're really going through something that's lasting, you know, a little bit of time, maybe you need to put it on your mirror and say, I got through this that was hard. I did this that was hard. I accomplished this and it was really hard. Look at these things that I did. I can do hard things. I can get through this too. And then maybe find some way that you can serve somewhere else. Because sometimes when we're just in like just one of those, you know, like funky funk spells like where you just get all wrapped up and you don't even know why you're upset about stuff but you're just upset about everything you know everything is just bad sometimes we need to remind ourselves that the world is not only our world that the world is so much bigger than us and sometimes all that takes is serving someone else and this doesn't have to be anything crazy you don't have to like go sign up for a mission trip or anything crazy it can be something simple like taking a dinner you know to a Offering to babysit for your friends so that they can go and get some stuff done or cooking, you know, your spouse's favorite meal and surprising them or treating your friend to a pedicure. Whatever it is, find a way to serve someone else and likely you're going to feel better afterward because sometimes we just need to shift our focus off of ourselves for a little while to get some perspective. And lastly, get to work. Sometimes it's the only thing to get you through is to just keep your head down and keep moving forward. Uh, I know that you guys have all heard that saying the only way out is through. Sometimes it's the truth. So just stay the course. Don't sacrifice your momentum because of the emotions you're feeling. If you have to take it down a notch, that is fine. Sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes we are running up here at 100% and we've got to take it down to 75 for a little while. But don't just stop completely. If your goal is to really make something out of this, you can't just stop completely whenever you have a peak or valley because you're gonna ruin your momentum. And the only person that it's hurting is you and your team and, and your business. And it's just no good to, to risk that for the moment. So drop down to the three vital behaviors, drop down to you know checking in with your people, sharing little bits of your journey if you have to, if, you're, if going too hard is not for you, but stay the course. And I promise, when you come out the other side, you're going to be happy that you stuck with it. And lastly, remember that emotions are temporary and that good things take time. And I thought that this quote was kind of funny because it's true, but then it also applies to like coaching since we have diamond coaches. But a diamond is just a lump of coal that did really well under pressure. And I thought that was so cute. So I want to end on this video that I think is really cool and motivational. Um, it's I think like five minutes long, so I'm going to go ahead and play it, and then after that, I'll switch to our Q&A time for a couple minutes. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path and that will make all the difference. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. But you're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful? There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. 
Anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships. Anybody can be positive then. Anybody can have a larger vision then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. The real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. It takes courage to act. Part of being hungry when you've been defeated, it takes courage to start over again. Fear kills dreams. Fear kills hope. Fear put people in the hospital. Fear can age you can hold you back from doing something that you know within yourself that you're capable of doing, but it will paralyze you. At the end of your feelings is nothing. But at the end of every principle is a promise. Behind your little feelings, it might not be absolutely nothing at the end of your little feelings. But behind every principle is a promise. And some of you in your life, the reason why you're not at your goal right now, because you're just all about your feelings. You, you all on your feelings. You don't feel like waking up. So who does? Every day you say no to your dreams, you might be pushing your dreams back a whole six months, a whole year. That one single day, that one day you didn't get up, could have pushed your stuff back I don't know how long. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. You want it, and you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy when you want to change. It's not easy. If it were, in fact, easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back. And I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. Take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. You can decide that I'm going to live each day as if it were my last. Live your life with passion. With some drive. Decide that you're going to push yourself. The last chapter to your life has not been written yet. And it doesn't matter about what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? This year, I will make this goal become a reality. I won't talk about it anymore. I can. I can. I can.